This is a case of a middle-aged man who presented to our emergency room with several weeks of recurrent abdominal pain, mostly in the upper abdomen, nausea, vomiting, and early satiety. Because of his complaints, an abdominal ultrasound was obtained. This is a view of the left upper quadrant. For orientation, this is the left kidney. The relatively homogeneous signal of the spleen is visualized here. The hyperechoic diaphragm is here and the hyperechoic wavy line of the spine is visualized at the bottom of the screen. Typically, the spine is not visualized above the diaphragm. This is because air, which fills the thorax, is a non-conductive medium to ultrasound waves, and thus the signal of the spine is only visualized below the diaphragm. If the thorax is filled with a conductive medium, such as consolidated lung tissue from an ammonia or fluid from a pleural effusion, that medium may conduct ultrasound waves down to the spine, and thus the spine will be visualized above the diaphragm as a hyperechoic line. This would be noted as a positive spine sign. Very often, a positive spine sign is considered evidence of pulmonary pathology. As we loop the clip, we see in this patient a positive spine sign in the left upper quadrant extending above the diaphragm. A chest x-ray was obtained of this patient, and clearly the gastric contents were visualized above the diaphragm. Additionally, air fluid level was seen in the stomach. If one can imagine the probe being placed on the outside of the patient in the left upper quadrant, it's easy to see how the ultrasound waves could penetrate either above the diaphragm, directly through the filled gastric contents to visualize the spine, or through the spleen, up towards the gastric contents, and towards the spine. In this lateral view, again, it is clearly demonstrated that gastric contents are above the diaphragm and that there is an air fluid level within the stomach. A CT was obtained. This is a relatively posterior view of the abdomen. One can see the spine here, the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, and again, the diaphragmatic defect with stomach contents protruding up into the thorax. In the CT, it's again easy to see how ultrasound waves penetrating between the ribs, through the spleen, through the diaphragm, and then through gastric contents could easily create a positive spine sign. Even above the spleen, if the gastric contents were against the edge of the patient's thoracic wall, one could penetrate ultrasound waves through the thoracic wall, through the gastric contents to visualize a positive spine sign. In a more anterior slice of the abdominal CT image, we can see very clearly gastric contents extending up into the thorax with a diaphragmatic defect. The take home points from this case are that normally the spine sign should not be visualized above the diaphragm because air in the lungs is a non-conductive medium to ultrasound. If the spine is visualized, it indicates a conductive medium is in the thorax, and this is between the, strobe, the probe and the spine. This is known as a positive spine sign. Typically, a spine sign above the diaphragm suggests pulmonary pathology, but other pathology is also possible. In this case, a hiatal hernia with gastric contents conducting the ultrasound waves through the thorax to see the spine.